Hello guys, this is another video from Whatever Networks. My name's Nikki, and today I'm going to go through the Citrix ADC securing the management console with uh, certificates and SSL. Saying that the certificate uh, is not trusted, and therefore, if you have any other policies in your site, you may not be able to access your Citrix console. So what we're going to do is we're going to secure this with a certificate and have it signed by our internal CA. Now just to go past this, I'm going to have to click the advance and go to accept the risk and continue. Then I get access to my Citrix ADC. So I'm going to log into this. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have to create an RSA key or a security key for the encryption process. I'm going to keep it simple, but there are three uh, types of keys that you could use. In this case, I'm going to create a RSA key, but you must use a DSA key or an EC DSA key. Um, there are different authentication encryption mechanisms. Uh, ESD SA key is the most strongest. So what we're going to do is just for this video, I'm going to create an RSA key. Uh, and this is all we really need for like managing, uh, securing our management console. And now we need to give our RSA key a, a name. All right. So I'm just going to call it MGMT RSA dot key. Uh, this will be used to encrypt the certificate uh, and you'll require this when you come to install it again. I'm going to just put in the standard 2048. I'm going to use PEM and I'm going to use S256. Now this is where we have to insert a passphrase. Now I'm going to insert a passphrase, but I can only use uh, numbers and characters. Uh, let's not put any special symbols in there because you will have an issue trying to install the certificate if you have something similar to a dollar, pound sign, or etc. Maybe even a star. Um, so if you have a special character, you may have problems installing the certificate. I would recommend that you use uh, numbers and letters only. Once we've done that, we're going to click on the create button. And we have our MGMT RSA key. The next thing we need to do is create a certificate signing request. So what we need to do here is we're going to ask, we're going to create a request saying, you know, wnctxns networks.com uh, needs to be verified and we need to get it trusted. And who's going to trust this website? At the moment, it's not trusted. And why should it be? It's not signed by anything and it's not trusted by anyone. Um, so we need to ask it to be trusted now because we're the domain owners we can actually do that and we're actually going to use our internal ca in order to do that signing request you can choose to use an alternative certificate signing request out to um, another provider such as verisign or digicert are two of ones i know of plus there are plenty more even godaddy will do you well Anyway, so what we need to do is create a certificate signing request. It's very simple. We click on the CSR tab and then click on certificate signing request. We'll need to give this a key. Uh, sorry, we'll need to give this a name. So MGMT, I'm going to say RSA, um, and that's fine. REQ for request. It could be text. It doesn't really matter what you call the file name. I like to call it REQ because that stands for request. Now, the, the key file name is already on the appliance because we've already created it. You can also create a key and export it onto other NetScalers or Citrix ADCs um, in case that you wish to replicate or make many copies of the same uh, of the same appliance. But in this case, I'm just going to use this one. So I've got my MGMT RSA key. I'm going to click OK. And now I need to put that passphrase back in that I set initially. Uh, I'm going to select SHA-256 because it's a bit more secure. Now, a subject alternative name is not required. But if you had a subdomain, plus domain, and a host, then you might need to do it. So, for example, client dot 
um, provider dot domain would be a subject alternative name. In this case, we don't really care for that. We're going to use the common name and the common name is actually up here in the URL. That's exactly what we want. We want this. So we're going to put that common name right in there. Remember that you have to include a domain name. I'll fill in the rest of the details of this, um, this page so you don't have to see. With the page filled out, I am now ready to click create. You may put a challenge password and a company name if you wish to do so. This provides more information to your certificate authority. Since it's an internal one, I'm just going to leave it with the basics. Okay, so we have our certificate of signing request completed now, and it's this file here. We will need to download that file. So I'm going to save the file, and once it's saved, it's going to be up here, and I'm going to just open that file up in Notepad. So this is what our certificate signing request looks like. It has a begin and end. We need to capture every character inside there, but no additional spaces afterwards. Once we do that, we copy it. Now I need to log on to my domain controller uh, certificate services to actually request and sign that certificate. So first of all, I will go to my domain controller. And set serve. If you haven't installed a domain controller certificate services or PKI services before, I will do a video on that and it will be published soon. That will show you exactly how to configure, install, and set up your certificate services for your domain. I will need to authenticate because I'm coming from an outside source. And you should also know that you will need to ask for permission or get permissions or assign permissions to yourself or other members of your organization should you wish uh, to make a certificate request or have the ability to sign them. So in this case, I'm going to request a certificate, use advanced certificate request, and I'm going to paste that information in, making sure that there's no spaces here and that, there's, uh, and that it has all the text at the top. Once I've done that, I'm going to select the web server template. If you look into this and you only have user or EFS, then you probably don't have permissions to the rest of these templates. And you'll need to ask your administrator or have a look at those videos related to doing so. I'm going to click submit now. Now, because this was all created in a pen format, I'm going to select base64 encoded. You can download the entire chain, but I will show you how we can install the CA certificate and the server certificate and link them together. So downloading the certificate, I'll click save, and then this will be in my folder. I have a few certificates in already, so I'm just going to rename this particular certificate and I'm going to call it MGMT new, oh, sorry, I'll call it RSA new, uh, and that should be it. So once I've done that, oh, sorry, it needs to be called set uh, MGMT RSA new. Okay. So that is the certificate I'm going to be using, the one that says new. Um, obviously not the best naming convention because there are other ones as well. Um, and let's just delete. I'm in the middle of something. You'll have to wait. Sorry? I didn't know you were talking to anyone. Uh, I'm recording. Okay. Uh, well, how long are you going to be? Uh, not long. I bodged up the last recording, so I have to do it again. Well, how long is that? Uh, well, it should take probably... Oh, crap, I'm still... That's fine. All right, we're going to use Base64 encoded because we had the certificate was created in a pen format. So I'm going to click on the download certificate button. That's going to save the file. And once we've done that, I'm going to get a cert, new cert, cert new CRT file. Now I like to rename this to what it should be. So I'm going to call it uh, WN and then I'm going to call it MGMT and then RSA and then signed. 
that's the name of the certificate. And what I'm going to do now is we're going to install that certificate. So back to our Citrix ADC, uh, we're going to go up here to certificates and we're going to serve certificates. Now, I already have a wildcard certificate in there, as you can see, and that's signed over there. Uh, but I'm going to install my own certificate and I'm going to call this WN, uh, let's see, let's call this MGMT. And then we're going to call it RSA. So that's the name of the certificate pair I'm going to use. So first thing I need to do is upload that certificate. So it's this one here, and it's one that's signed. And then I'm going to use the, oh, bear me. You need to see this key here. This is the key that we used before. So I need to go find that key now. So I'm just going to scroll right down to probably the second page. And let me see that one there. There's the key, uh, MGMT underscore RSA key. So that's the key that we need. Remember to put our passphrase back in, our password. Uh, and then we got no traps set for this at the moment, but then that's a different subject. And I'll show you about traps and how we can configure this with our Citrix ADM, uh, also known as MMAS. Uh, but we're not going to worry about that today. So I'm going to click on the install and our certificate is now installed. Great, but we're not over yet. It's not completely done. You see, this certificate doesn't have a CA assigned and we don't have a CA installed on our Citrix ADM, oh sorry, Citrix ADC. So uh, what we need to do is we need to install it. So you can go back up to your Microsoft account and we can go to the beginning and we can download a, a certificate, a CA certificate. Now I've actually downloaded this already, so there's no need for me to download it again. I'm just going to click on the install button and I'm going to call it WN root CA. I only have a CA. I don't have any intermediate servers on certificate intermediate services on here. So I only need to install the one certificate. Uh, so I'm going to click on local and this is the root CA that I downloaded a bit earlier going to click on that. Uh, I get a notification period of 30 days of when it expires. I'm going to click install. So now we have our root CA installed and our service certificate installed. Still, we're not over yet. You do need to link the two together. So if we click on the service certificates and then click on RSA, the WN MGMT RSA, which has the common name of the host name of this link, what we need to do then is click select and then click on link. This automatically populates it with the certificate authority that it believes is associated with the service certificate. And now we click on the OK button. They are now linked. This is good. You can also check the linking by clicking on the select action and then going to cert links. As you can see, this is the certificate key name and this is the CA. Great. So now we've done all that work. All we need to do is link it. Uh, and bind this certificate to the service that runs the dashboard and this portal to get into the Citrix ADM management console. What we do that is under load balancing. Under load balancing, there's a services tab, services option. And on the services option, there's internal services. Once we've done that, we need to find the one that says NSHTTPS, and it has a loopback address of 443, but it has an IP address here of what we are using. It's 443 SSL. So this is what we need. We click on that and then we click on edit. Okay, so this is where we are. We need to scroll down to our SSL. What we need to do is change the service certificate. Currently it's set to the it's set to the certificate that's built in with the NetScaler, also known as a self-signed certificate. I'm going to click on the add binding and then I'm going to select which certificate I want. As this is the common name, I'm going to select WNMGMT RSA and then select. Now I'm going to bind that certificate and the other binding will then unbind. So the self-signed certificate will now be unbounded. I'm going to click close. This is also an option of where you can create different ciphers and turn on and turn off some TLS settings as well. So in our SSL parameters, 
I'm going to click on the little pencil and I'll wait a moment for that to take effect. So now we have to go down here and untick SSL3 and secure insecure. I'm going to leave TLS 1.1 and 1.2 enabled. 1.3 is also available, but you have to ensure you have all the right ciphers for that. So as this is a management interface in a lab environment, I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm going to click OK, and now I'm going to double check again that our certificate is installed and bound. And here it is. Yes, it's definitely there. So I'm going to go down and then click Done. Right, so that should be it now. Hi, so we have installed the certificate correctly. Um, I actually had to use Internet Explorer to prove this, uh, but if I click on the little padlock here and then the view certificates, the certificate path you can see is correct. And so therefore we are now secure, even with the little logo there uh, on this. I've also tested this with Edge as well. And you also get a little certificate that has been identified uh, and if you click on here, view certificate, you'll also see that it's all being secured. So that's the end of this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoy videos. Uh, please subscribe and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.